Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a story about the state of Washington and for our beer today we have the Dirty Wookie. Check that out. Dirty Wookie. That's my, that's my Wookie sound, okay? And that is by the Brewer's Cabinet out of Reno, Nevada, just up the road from me. There we go. And we have had, again, this weekend, some good snowstorms come right through the Sierra and plop over the mountains in the Carson City here. And we're getting a lot of snow up there. It's really nice. We need it. So, And that is an Imperial Brown Ale. I guess that would be I-B-A instead of I-P-A. And it's, it's actually pretty good. I don't normally like brown ales. But uh, I thought I just I like the name number one, but that's really pretty good. It's not super bitter, so I like that. So in the state of Washington is Lake Chelan, a 50 mile long lake, about a mile, 1.2 miles wide, not super wide, but 50 miles long, and it goes into the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, 3.8 million acres. And just on the east side, and just outside the National Forest, on the east side of the lake, is the town of Shalon. So just outside of town, up the road along the lake, was where Sadie lived. Sadie was a 16-year-old teenager, and she would, from time to time, babysit for a family down the road from her house, about three-quarters of a mile. And she would babysit this eight-year-old boy named Andy. This particular night, she was babysitting Andy, and what she would usually do was make him a quick meal in the microwave, like microwave mac and cheese, and then have him play on his PlayStation in the living room and just hang out in his thing, and then she could go in the kitchen or somewhere else in the house and just hang out and have fun. And she would sometimes have a friend over. This particular night, she had her friend Chelsea over, and they were hanging out in the kitchen, talking about boys and doing whatever teenage girls do when they're hanging out. And they were listening to the CD player, and the CD stopped, and she got up to change the CD, and she heard outside this loud drumming sound. At least at first, it sounded like this drumming sound. Very rhythmic, very pretty loud, coming from the backyard and in the forest in the backyard. And Chelsea heard it too. And she was thinking, did Andy go outside? Is he doing something outside? And she was really concerned. So Chelsea and Sadie both got up and went looking through the house for Andy. Sadie went into the living room and she didn't see Andy in front of the TV. So she kind of panicked. She thought, Oh my gosh, maybe he is outside. So she went back to the kitchen, went out the back door into the backyard and she started yelling for Andy. And she's like yelling, Andy, Andy. And she was thinking there's bears, mountain lions, and they're at the edge of this national forest and it's dark out. And that's the last thing she wanted was to have this eight year old boy disappear or something happen. She's she was responsible. She's the person to take care of this kid. And then from inside the house, she heard Andy's voice. And he said, I'm here. What? I'm here. And so Sadie was relieved that she found him. He's in the house somewhere. Little concerned about whatever this was in the forest. So she went back in the house and as she's closing the door and she's just about ready to turn the backyard light off, she saw something run across the backyard. It was huge. Her first thought, it was a bear. It was just for a moment. This large thing ran across the yard, but then she thought, this is really weird because it looked like somebody on all fours, like a person on all fours. It was on all fours. Startled her. She's looking out the window, peering out the window, just to see if it would come back or what was going on. 
And then Chelsea came up behind her and put her hand on Sadie's shoulder and Sadie jumped. It scared her. And she said, I'm sorry, but Andy is in his bedroom and he's under the bed and he won't come out. He's really frightened by something. So Sadie and Chelsea went down the hallway to Andy's bedroom. They could see that he was under the bed. Sadie got down on her knees and leaned under and said, Andy, what's wrong? And Andy said, it's out there again. Sometimes he comes around when mom and dad are gone. And Sadie said, who? And Andy said, the monster. And then Sadie didn't dismiss it because she had just seen this thing in the backyard and heard this sound in the woods. And so she was really listening to Andy. So Sadie asked him, have you told your mom and dad about this? And he said, yes, but they don't believe me. They think I'm making this up. And Sadie had babysat before, but she'd never heard this from Andy. It's all new to her. Then Andy said there was another babysitter that had heard something and seen something. And she called the mom and dad and told them she did not want to stay in the house any longer and demanded that they come home. The parents concluded that the babysitter saw a large bear. Then Sadie convinced Andy to come out from underneath the bed. Finally. Soon as he came out, they heard the noise again. This loud knocking, tree knocking in the forest in the backyard. Andy quickly fled back under the bed again. And then Sadie said, is it the monster that makes the noise? And Andy just nodded, yes. And then Sadie said, how can you be so sure? And then Andy said, because he always comes to look at me after he makes the noise. Andy was clearly disturbed by his own words. Sadie felt this instant chill come over her body and she had this horrible feeling, this deep fear overtake her. She looked over at Chelsea and Chelsea was paralyzed with fear. She could just see it in her eyes, but Chelsea was staring across the room. And Sadie looked at Chelsea and then she looked towards where she was looking and she saw outside the window this face, this horrible, ugly face, only seeing half of it because it was on the window frame about two thirds of the way up the window staring right at them had this grayish face on it, thin lips, chapped lips, and this blotches of hair on his head, just staring at them. Sadie was too afraid to scream. She felt she couldn't if she wanted to. She felt like her lungs were paralyzed. She also felt like whatever this thing was, it had bad intentions, like it was plotting something. Chelsea was standing right there and then she screamed as she was running out of the room and she said, I'm calling the police. She was heading for the kitchen. Sadie watched as Chelsea ran down the hallway and then when she looked back towards the window, the creature was gone. She immediately reached under the bed and grabbed Andy and pulled him out. She literally dragged him into the hallway. And then Andy and Sadie were standing in the hallway listening to Chelsea down in the kitchen on the phone call with the police. And she was trying to explain and describe what she had seen and she was growing frustrated and she was stuttering and she just finally said, please, can you send somebody out now? We need help. And just then, Andy and Sadie could hear some tapping on the window down in the kitchen, this tapping sound. Chelsea let out a scream and she dropped the phone and she ran down the hallway to join them in the middle of the hallway. They're all freaked out standing there in the hallway and they could hear this tapping sound down in the kitchen still. Chelsea said there was this large hand that reached up and was tapping on the window and it was this grayish palm with hair on it and it was this hand was massive. 
And Sadie was looking at her, listening, and then she said, okay, okay, stop, stop, hush. You're scaring Andy. Andy was clearly like freaked out in a state of shock, hearing all this. Then the tapping stopped and they could hear these loud footsteps running on the back side of the house, outside the house running, these loud footsteps running away back towards the forest in the backyard. Just then, the doorbell rang. It startled them. They're all three standing in the hallway and that's where the bell was. It just scared them. And they heard from the front steps, police, this is the police. They all three went to the front door, opened the door, and there was a police officer standing there. And there was another one, a female officer, standing to the left of the driveway with her flashlight shining down that side of the house where the creature just was. Her body language said she had seen something, just the way she had stopped and looked. And then the police officer said, we heard there was an intruder or something's going on here. Can you explain what's going on here? The female police officer came in and she took Andy aside and started questioning him. And Sadie couldn't hear what they were saying. And then the other police officer said, could you two step outside? And Sadie and Chelsea went on the front porch and were talking to the police officer. And he immediately shined his flashlight into their eyes and said, have you been drinking this evening? And they said, no, we have not been drinking this evening. We had something and, or somebody, something outside and it's frightening us and we need some help here. And she was feeling like he was questioning her and she was feeling like almost like a child that was lying or something. There was something about seeing this creature outside this window, how big it was and how tall up in the window it was, that she felt like five police officers weren't going to be enough to help them. She just wanted to be taken seriously and to feel safe. So Sadie felt like she was a child crying wolf. She wasn't being taken seriously. Chelsea was not any help at all. She, Sadie looked at Chelsea and she could see that she was in her own state of shock and fear and just trying to deal with this. She didn't say a word. The female police officer called the mom and dad and told them there was a situation at the house. They showed up and they would hear nothing of the story that Sadie was trying to tell them about. They weren't hearing it. In fact, Sadie was never hired again to babysit Andy. Sadie and Chelsea could talk about this. They actually bonded over this situation. It made them better friends. They found out later, a couple months later, that Andy and his family had moved away. And Sadie had a really good idea why. And that is our story for tonight. Crazy story. And I appreciate you guys watching my channel. Uh, really good comments. As I always say, you guys are a great community and uh, it's been a lot of fun for me. I'm going to continue this. Uh, we're getting through the snow season and uh, we'll be getting out though. But I appreciate you guys as always. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. As always, keep hiking.